The leader of the free world met with Vladimir Putin yesterday and challenged him on Syria and gay rights. The leader of the free world is, of course, now French President Emmanuel Macron. The French president clearly represented the interests of the free world against the tyrannies of Vladimir Putin. And in the press conference following their meeting, President Macron maintained a sometimes confrontational tone, according to the New York Times. The Times reports, with Mr. Putin standing beside him, he accused two news organizations with ties to Russia of acting as organs of influence rather than as true outlets for journalism. President Macron's meeting with President Putin followed President Trump's insult tour of Europe in which he complained about rich Americans and how they are ruining America with their addiction to German cars, which he blamed entirely on Germany. Joining us now, Wendy Sherman, former Under Secretary of State. Uh, Ambassador Sherman, the, first of all, your reaction to the, the president's uh, meetings in Europe and what he had to say about, about Germany, German trade, uh, and the, the total effect of, of, of his uh, visit there. Well, I think uh, for the United States American security, the most important thing is the transatlantic alliance, our relationship with Europe. And what the president did, I think, was well symbolized when all of the leaders of the G7, the largest economies in the world, took a walk in Sicily, uh, and the president followed behind them in a golf cart. I think it really summarized it all. He was aloof from them. He was other than them. Uh, he gave the uh, head of Saudi Arabia complete deference, said he wasn't going to lecture him in any way, and then lectured our closest allies. Uh, you said that Macron was now the leader of the free world. Angela Merkel is the leader of Europe. Uh, the president went out of his way to push both of these leaders away, when, in fact, our security depends on a strong U.S.-European alliance. You know, it was fascinating to see how President Macron uh, handled the meeting with Vladimir Putin, because th th there was this kind of positive, very sentimental base to it, uh, involving the history of the relationship, mm -hmm. going back 300 years, positive things about France uh, and Russia, and there was plenty, they spent a plenty of time talking about that and talking about that publicly, but it, 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 it did not mean that President Macron backed away from any of the points of conflict that they have now, and he was very, very firm about that publicly. Yes, I think, Lawrence, many people have said, and I think it's a great line, that President Trump plays checkers while all of these other leaders are playing chess. They see all of the moves on the chessboard, and they know that this is not a one-dimensional transactional time of life where you just sort of say, if you give me this, I'll give you that. It really is an understanding of history. It's an understanding of all of the ties of history. You know, Angela Merkel comes from East Germany. Uh, she understood what the U.S. meant to Germany in terms of the change in history. She understands Germany's history and how she's always going to draw back and never go too far because she knows Europe will get worried and concerned about German nationalism and where it might head. Macron understands the history of France as the bastion of liberté, of liberty. And so he has really uh, stepped forward as a very young president of France, not with lots of experience, but in a totally different way than President Trump has. He has come with history, with sentiment, as you said, with a deep understanding of the importance of the relationship. And you mentioned uh, the president's concern about automobiles. The irony is, is that BMW exports more automobiles from Spartanburg, South Carolina, from the United States to the rest of the world, than does any other automaker in the United States. Uh, it's not at all clear that the president knows that BMWs are also made in America. I, I just want to get your reaction to uh, Secretary of Homeland Security John Kelly, what he said uh, in defending the possibility of Jared Kushner trying to set up a so-called back channel with the Russians during mm -hmm. the transition. Let's listen to this. I don't see any uh, big issue here relative to um relative to Jared. I think any time you can open uh, lines of communication with uh, anyone, whether they're good friends or not so good friends, is a, is a smart thing to do. Your reaction to that? It absolutely took my breath away, Lawrence. 
Uh, we are talking again about the national security of the United States. To think that someone who had no position in the U.S. government was merely helping out his father-in-law during the transition would consider going into the very heart of Russia, because the embassy is Russian soil, and really commit our national security to such a channel is absolutely breathtaking. It shows either tremendous naivete or something that is so dark that I don't even want to go there. Former Under Secretary of State Ambassador Wendy Sherman, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.